Sunlight will be used as a source of energy sooner or later, anyway. Why wait? This sentence was not pronounced last year by Bertrand Picard or André Borschberg, but by a woman born in Budapest in 1900, who, from an early age, is interested in the potential of solar energy after she read a book dealing with this futuristic technology. Her passion for science leads Maya Telkes to university, where she gets a degree in physics and chemistry in 1920 and a PhD in 1924. Maya then becomes a professor, but not for long. The following year, she crosses the Atlantic to visit one of her uncles, who moved to America, and on that occasion, she gets a job as a biophysicist at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation. Telkes starts her career in medical research and works with a surgeon to develop a device which can record the electrical activity of the brain, and she also creates a machine which evaluates the growing of cancer cells thanks to cellular energy emissions. It's a bit technical. In 1937, Maya obtains the American citizenship and leaves the Cleveland Clinic Foundation for Westinghouse Electric, a company that hires her to develop devices to turn heat into electricity. Still thinking of her first love, Telkes takes part from 1939 on an MIT project focused on solar energy. Because of the recession, the US government is looking for alternative and cheap energy sources. The war puts this research into brackets for a few years, cause Maya has to work for the army to solve a thorny problem. The supply of drinking water for the pilots. Let's get back in time. In 1941, most of the fights involving American soldiers takes place in the Pacific Ocean. When a plane is shot down or when a boat sinks, the soldiers are left on a raft in the middle of the ocean and they have to wait for relief, sometimes for days. So producing drinking water is essential to their survival, but unfortunately, the few existing equipments are heavy and cumbersome. Telkes develops a simple and light device, consisting of an inflatable plastic envelope and a receptacle. You just have to put seawater in the box, wait for the water to evaporate under the effect of heat, and then to condense, free of salt, to obtain drinking water. At the end of the war, this principle is used again in the Virgin Islands, where freshwater sources often dry up. In 1948, Maya Telkes, the engineer, Eleanor Raymond, the architect, and Amelia Peabody, the sculptor, work together to build the Doverson House in Dover, Massachusetts. The building is heated thanks to solar energy and the use of Glauber salt, a material which can accumulate heat when it melts and releases this same heat when it solidifies. Boxes made of metal and glass capture solar energy and heated air circulates in pipes that pass through the walls. And Glauber's salts are put in these pipes. Maya Terkes is the inventor of the solar house. The concept is revolutionary and ingenious, and it could have made us live in houses which not use too much energy for half a century. Unfortunately, after a few years, Glauber salts lose their effectiveness and Maya's solar house was nothing more than a project. But Maya wins the prize from the Society of Women Engineers in 1952 anyway. And in 1980, Telkes will be involved in the creation of the first house which gets all its energy from the sun. In 1953, Maya joins the New York University and keeps exploring the potential of solar energy. Telkes is convinced that this technology will become big in the 70s. In the same year, she gets a grant from the Ford Foundation to develop a solar oven for developing countries. In 1958, she is hired by Curtis Wright to create solar-powered objects. One of Telkes' first realizations will be the design of a heating system for the new building that houses her laboratory. In 1961, working for Crayotown, Maya is involved in the development of a heat-resistant material for the Apollo and Polaris missions. In 1969, she joins the University of Delaware and works on... solar energy, of course. In 1977, Telkes gets a Charles Greeley Abbott Award from the International Solar Energy Society and another award, given by the National Academy of Sciences, for her career. Maria retires in 1978, but the 70 years old woman still works on several projects as a consultant. In 1995, Maya Telkes comes back to Budapest for the first time since she left for the USA. It will also be her last journey because she dies in the city where she was born. And this is how the story of the Queen of Sun ends.